in English grammar explained. Mood in grammar, refers to the various attitudes expressed in the use of language by speakers. That is, the way in which speakers convey their intended meaning through words. It helps the receiver of the spoken or written words to understand what the intentions of the speaker is in using them, in order to deliver the appropriate feedback. There are three main types of mood in English grammar namely, indicative mood, subjunctive mood, and imperative mood. Indicative mood. Indicative mood is the grammatical mood that is expressed in statement of facts, declarations or reports. This type of mood is realizable in declarative sentences and it is often referred to as the only realistic mood, because it states facts and actions or incidents that happened or are very likely to occur. The indicative mood can be used to form both declarative sentences and interrogative sentences. Some examples include, the sky is bright. Nigeria is the giant of Africa. Schools are important in societies. What is the best time to study? Do you visit here often? How did you do it? All the examples above are instances of the indicative mood and you can tell that they all present realistic facts or activities that are very likely to occur. Subjunctive mood. Subjunctive mood is the grammatical mood that is used in expressing wishes, suggestions, conditions and outcomes, etc. It is known as an unrealistic mood because it is simply a hypothesis. That is, a proposition or an assumption of what may happen but has not taken place at the moment, or is not the case. Subjunctive mood simply shows probabilities. It can exist in a number of ways, as wishes, I wish he were taller. Martha hopes he would make it. The teacher wished her salary were higher. The auxiliary verb, were, is used in expressing the subjunctive mood whether or not the subject is singular, because the information it presents is not realistic since it is but a wish or an assumption. As, suggestions or recommendations, I suggest you visit the school's clinic. The doctor recommend you stay at home for a week if you have the flu. She recommend that they help out in the kitchen more often. He suggest I cook dinner this night. I pray you make it in life. As conditions and outcomes, if I were you, I would study harder for my exams. If it rains today, the streets will be flooded. If I had not listened to him, you would have become president today. If the court rules in your favor, it would be a great win for your company. Conditions and outcomes in subjunctive mood are introduced by the if clause, also known as conditionals or conditional clauses. They present a condition at the initial point of a sentence and then the outcome follows later on. Imperative mood. Imperative mood is the grammatical mood that expresses commands or directives. It is a type of mood that is expressed in imperative sentences. Imperative mood is also regarded as unrealistic because the commands being issued have not yet been carried out as at when they were given, and so they remain hypotheses until they are carried out. Some examples include, go to the porch, get off your phones, sit on your chairs not the tables, play with your spare time, come to the party today. So mood is simply the feelings a speaker wishes to convey through their use of language and they exist in three forms namely, indicative mood which presents facts, subjunctive mood which presents hypotheses, and imperative mood which issues commands or directives. Understanding the way or manner in which you wish to convey your messages to an audience will determine the type of mood that is appropriate for you to use and such result in a clear communication of thoughts. See you soon.